Hey, it's uh, Benjamin Ray with another edition of Cannabis Sustainability TV or Sustainable Cannabis TV. Uh, brand new for this year, we've changed our focus here based on the demand uh, and all the innovations that are going on within cannabis and packaging, but in sustainability. So uh, we're still going to talk about sustainability in general, but it's actually living with and being sustainable, living with sustainable practices, uh, no matter what industry you're in. So I'd like to jump into it here. You know, last year was uh, just a crazy year and we're on to a new year here. So what I'd like to talk about today is bioplastics. I mean, there are really interesting discussions going on about bioplastics and sustainability, but that's something that I'm extremely excited for. And as, as you all know, over the past 10 months, I've had a lot of discussions with people about whose responsibility is it actually to reduce packaging waste. And, you know, I originally thought it was consumers, then package manufacturers, then retail brands. And really the answer is it's all of us. But that becomes overwhelming because it's like, well, how do we all talk to one another? How's it coordinated? Where do you start? It's a big, big challenge. But there are some great companies that are doing some amazing jobs at bioplastics, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, but what I wanted to, to say is after my broadcast on Friday, I really started thinking more about what I'm doing, not just recycling or not, you know, not just buying something that might be in paper. I'm not that aware and I need to do a lot more. So when I went to the store on Friday, I was looking at some different products and I kind of found one that I liked uh, and it was plastic. I didn't even think about it. I was just looking at the ingredients. And then right next to that, I saw one out of metal for the exact same price. And so, you know, you can get the same product in both of these. I mean, it's a, the use is the same, different brand, but I chose the ones in the metal. And that got me thinking, you know, all we need to do is be more aware of our choices and we can start right there. They were right next to one another. They were the same price. So I bought the metal. So I don't need to buy plastic that I'm going to toss, you know, if it can't be recycled anymore. And by the way, sometimes depending on the product in there, you're not able to, to recycle it. Some, some plastics you can't recycle. So in terms of the, the metal, readily available tin, aluminum. So look for that more and more. So um, secondly, next, uh, yesterday, I was looking for a cord around my house. And you know, m most like you, you know, we've all got technology and we've got the adapters. And I, I went to find a cord and I want to show you this. So this is what came up. And, you know, I was looking for a cord in there. And then I realized I've got four boxes like that, that I've had over the years thinking like, well, I need a, I'll probably use this sometime, but most of them are obsolete. So I'm like, well, I don't want to throw it away because it's just going to go into a landfill. You know, it's just a jumbled mess. So what do I do with it? Well, I keep it. So really the, the idea going forward is to just be more mindful of purchases. Buy minimally, don't buy big long cords that are gonna get tangled up with others if you don't need them. So, all right. So, you know, we talked a lot also about if consumers or would consumers pay more for a green product. So in this example, they were the same price. Okay, so how much more would I have paid for this one over this one. Now, a lot that we've talked about, people say 5%, 10%. Uh, I maintain that it has to be less for the mainstream to get into it, to, to buy. You know, there are people on this broadcast who would pay 10% more, maybe even 20% more for something that's green, but most people, they won't. They, they don't even think about it. They would just grab the plastic and then toss it just like that. So, you know, bioplastics is really interesting to me because, well, it's, tie, it's tied into oil prices. So when the, when we, uh, the bioplastics would, they generally cost more now, but when the price of oil goes up, then those start to look more attractive. But with COVID and the prices of oil coming down and the price wars, when oil prices crashed, well, then that's not good for bioplastics either. So my friends that are in uh, energy, oil and gas business, it's not good for either of us. It's not good when the prices of oil go down because then the interest in bioplastics goes down. So despite this, there are a few companies, a few big brands that are doing a good job 
despite the, the prices of oil, despite what's going on in the world, they've got plans for 2025. And they have for a couple of years, some from 2017, but I think that COVID has accentuated this a lot more. And 2025 seems to be the number, you know, it seems to be the number that the companies are committing to, you know, being carbon neutral or making all their products out of, you know, bioplastics, whatever that is. But I'm going to go through these. There's a list of a few companies and you can look them up after. In fact, I'll put the links down below. But the first one is called Good Natured. So they have over 100 products and they are moving in the right direction. It's goodnaturedproducts.com. Uh, you can check them out. But they're doing a lot of, you know, uh, packaging for food. The next one, uh, it's from a, a company, it's a Eco Shoe. You know, there's been a lot of eco stuff in Patagonia for a long time, and some of the shoe manufacturers are starting to, to come through now. I was looking through a magazine a while ago, and I saw this ad on, this, uh, on the paper, and it, it really caught my eye. I'm, I'm going to read it here. The ad said, this is Cy Cyclone, and this is the running shoe you will never own. No, really, you can't have these shoes. Completely intrigued me. And so uh, they're made from beans and that's why. So it, uh, it says beans, it's a subscription service for $29.95. So, you know, really cool, caught my attention. They're doing something that's different and innovative. And I will put this in the link down below after. Uh, next is Bacardi. So they, they have a super bold approach. So what they're trying to do or what they're claiming they're going to do is replace 80 million plastic bottles. That's 80 million plastic bottles over the next couple of years. And that's 3,000 tons. Mm -hmm. What they're going to uh, replace it with is a plant-based based PHA. And that's going to be for their sapphire, their, their uh, uh, gin, Grey Goose Vodka, Patron Tequila, their vermouth, and their, their Dewar's Whiskey. And PHA is made from canola palm and soy seeds. So again, this is something that's really cool that companies are doing, and they're really leading the edge. So it's, it isn't necessarily the consumers. It's actually these companies on a mass scale that actually can affect what's going on. Uh, the next is Carlsberg, talking about beverages, the beer. So they're going to make their Pilsner in a cardboard lined uh, you know, bottle, and the inner layer will be plant plastic. I can't really say bottle. I, I guess it's a cardboard bottle. Um, the inner layer will be plastic that's made from wheat, corn, and beets. And that's another cool uh, thing that's happening in bioplastics. And I think there's a big, big opportunity for bioplastics in the next however long. I mean, we need to make sure that it doesn't take away from the food supply. But in general, it's better right now to look at ways to reduce plastic waste and we can figure out the, the food part about it. Um, um, as we go. The other companies that, are, that have committed by 2025 that are out there, they are making a difference, they are investing in sustainability, would be, um, let's see, Burberry, uh, Unilever, L'Oreal, Walmart, Target, Marks and Spencer, PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, and Dannon. And there's a lot of movement in that direction to reduce plastic waste. You know, with all the plastic that we consume, all the sodas, all the drinks, it's, it, it makes sense that whether it's a food or a beverage company would really push that forward. So I hope to see this year, uh, because of COVID, um, a lot of innovation in this area, a lot of information in, uh, innovation. And I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen over the next four years. And if these companies truly will make their goals by 2025, I think it's, uh, it's great that they're doing this, no matter what you think of any of these companies, they are being transparent in what they're doing to be more green. So we have coming up now in, Feb in January, an amazing line of speakers this month. So make sure to follow me and check in 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time daily, Monday through Friday, to watch these insightful interviews. So starting tomorrow, this week, we've got Preston Weeks, John Schwartz, Mark Musselman, and Justin Johnson. The next week, uh, we have Asa Goldstein, Brad Churchill, Zach Green, Mark Pes <laughs> Peskovich, uh, sorry for that, Mark, uh, and Lindsey Gaiman. The next week, we've got Tom McNamara, Fleeta Solomon, Brad Levin, Shabazz Kara Varani, and Adam Duke. 
And finally, for the last week of January, I've got Stephen George, Caitlin Orso, Michael Sassano, Sammy Turish, and Allison Justice. So we've got a great lineup. A lot of insightful conversations are going to ha happen here. And I invite any of you to ask questions along the way. We can respond to them on the show or afterward for sure. But this is a great place for you to contribute your ideas on these topics. So if you're interested in being on the show or you'd like to become a sponsor partner, uh, we're booking into mid-February. So send me a DM and I can get you in the schedule. So as always, be mindful and live a sustainable life.